Hi, Peter Charles here, folks, for Life Fly Fishing. And uh, if you've seen some of my other videos on leaders, you would see me talk about how to make leaders for wet flies and streamers and nymphs. But I've never really talked about why we should make our own leaders versus using these factory-made leaders, which work beautifully. Is there a reason why we should be making leaders? And if you're getting into fly fishing and just getting started, uh, is this something you should be thinking about? Well, the answer to that is yes, because making leaders isn't that difficult. There's a good reason why we have these factory tapered leaders. They do a wonderful job of turning over the dry fly. We want that dry fly to roll out and just flutter down. And, uh, you know, it just land gently on the water and just ride along. And those leaders do a perfect job of doing that. They have a very thick butt, very thick butt, a tapered section and a very thin front section. And I've got a video that explains all of how they work. However, you could use these for streamer fishing, wet fly fishing, nymphing. You could use them for everything if you wanted to. But there's basically two issues there. One is cost. These things aren't cheap if you start going through a lot of them. Uh, the other thing is that these are not the best suited leaders for uh, streamers, nymphing, and what have you, and wet flies. Uh, wet flies, not so bad. But here's the basic problem. The butt section of these dry fly leaders are very thick, and they turn over beautifully. That's why they work so great. But when you want to use them for streamers or wet flies, and you want to sink your fly, that's the thing. You want to get it down that thick butt works against you. And especially if it's made out of mono. Yes, I know you can get fluorocarbon versions of these, but you know the reality is, you know, some fluorocarbon on the end of a sink tip or an intermediate line or something like that, or even on the end of a floater, is gonna let you to get down a lot deeper than one of these things. Because that thick butt will get pushed up by the current and it won't get down as easily. And the same thing when we're uh, nymphing, um, when you want to be able to create that droop, that drop from the indicator down to the fly, um, you'll find that that thick butt section, again, gets in the way. Uh, you, it, it, there's a lot of drag in that butt section. And so if you've got that butt, se butt section drooping down to the fly, there's a lot of current pressure on that thick mono. So. What we're doing when we make leaders to suit a situation, and as I say, I've got a wet fly video and a nymph video for doing the leaders. Um, the reason why is we're trying to get the fly to behave properly when we're trying to sink the fly. Because with these things, we're usually associating them with the, the fly being on surface. So. What we're looking for is using thinner fluorocarbon, like this stuff here. And it's thin, we don't, use, we don't need that heavy butt section anymore. We're, we're not trying to drive that very thick, bushy, dry fly into, into the wind, for example. When we're fishing streamers, I mean, those flies have a lot of mass and they don't have a lot of drag. So you don't need that thick butt section that you would normally have in one of these things. Uh, to turn it over. It'll turn over just fine with a very thin butt section. And the advantage of that thin butt section, of course, is that it penetrates well. The current doesn't have any uh, pr as much pressure on it as it would with one of these things. So what can we use? Well, I've got fluorocarbon here. I really, really recommend using fluorocarbon if you want to sink a fly. Uh, fluorocarbon is denser than mono and it sinks faster. Uh, mono can actually be held up in the surface current, uh, surface film, I'm sorry. Surface tension can actually keep mono on top while your sink tip is going down and your fly is going down and you've got this bump of mono just being hung up. I've actually seen it happen to me. Cast it out in slow water with a very light streamer. The streamer went down, the sink tip went down, and there's the mono leader still stuck in this surface tension. So, you know, your uh, fluorocarbon, especially when you're using light flies, your fluorocarbon will sink and it won't impede the sink of the fly. So that's a good reason for getting into fluorocarbon. But you may say, fluorocarbon's expensive, I have trouble with the knots, blah, blah, blah. Are there other alternatives? Well, yes, 
you could use, you know, the fly fishing tippet material to do it. Now, that's also an expensive choice. Um, this is a lot more expensive than this cheap mono here. I mean, we can get, you know, like this. I mean, this cost me next to nothing. It's not, it's not what you call high-grade mono. It has a lot of memory and comes off like a slinky, but you can't straighten it. So if you're looking for a budget choice, just buy a spool of regular fly fish, a regular fishing mono. Also, you get stuff like this Maxima, which is mono that's built more with fly fishing in mind. Really good stuff. Comes in this chameleon, which is brown, and also comes in an ultra green, which is very more clear, a little bit of a greenish tinge to it. You can also have the uh, advantage of, you know, creating colored leaders. If there's any reason you need to see, like with contact nymphing, uh, where you can make a sighter out of this stuff, you know, there are reasons why you might want to use colored mono. So when you set out to build your leaders, I mean, you have options. And with, whether it's a, you're after a budget solution, maximum effectiveness, visibility, whatever it is, you know, or max or minimum diameter, which is what these would give you per pound for according to the braking strain, you're, there's choices and there's lots of choices. You also have the option of using the, things like this. This is a tippet ring. These are steel head size. They're also a trout size. And you can attach these tippet rings to the end of these and you can, can get much more mileage out of these. So as the tippet section wears down, you replace it, tie it to the tip, tippet ring, extend it out, wears down, find a new one, you can just keep on going. So this one is 4X, so I could match it up with a 4X tippet spool, put a tippet ring, and I keep this thing going forever. So that's another uh, way to save yourself some money, is get some of these tippet rings and uh, get the trout size if you're into trout, uh, trout fishing or steelhead size if you're into bigger species. And um, you can keep one of these going, provided you don't wreck it while well, doing something silly with it. You can keep it going for a very long time. So there are budget uh, approaches you can use. There are uh, other ways that you can, you know, other materials you could use which can either save money or give you maximum effectiveness. But the, the thing to keep in mind is that the thick butt section on these tapered leaders are designed to turn over that uh, high drag, very light high drag dry fly. It needs some push to get it to turn over. And that's what the butt section on these leaders supply. As soon as you get into nymphs, especially weighted nymphs, uh, wet flies, streamers, you don't need that anymore. Those flies keep going. They don't, they've got weight heavy hooks. They're not, not a lot of drag. They don't have big bushy hackles. They go. So you don't need the butt section anymore. So without the butt section, now you, the world opens up into what you can do and you can make leaders that really sink. So keep that in mind. Don't get locked into just using these. Uh, you do have the other opportunities uh, to build leaders. All you need to be able to master is really one knot. You can do the double surgeon's knot or the triple surgeon's knot. I prefer the triple. It lays flatter. It's neater. Uh, you master those knots, you can build any leader you want. And construction be quite simple. Uh, the simplest leader is two parts. You've got a butt section and a tippet section. That's it. Uh, just a one word of caution, I would never do a one-piece leader. Let's say I did a one-piece six-foot leader. I'll just say uh, this 10-pound fluorocarbon and I snag up or I hook a big fish which breaks me off. Usually the loop knot, the perfection loop, is a weaker knot than, so let's say, the uni knot that we used to tie the fly on. You snap it off at the loop. And then not only if you've lost six foot of line, you've left that on the bottom or in the mouth of the fish, which is not a good thing. So you're better off making two-part leaders so if it fails, it's the short, skinny bit at the end that fails, not the whole thing. You don't lose the whole thing. So just keep that in mind when, you, when you're building leaders is, you know, I know you can fish with a one-piece leader. Don't do it. The minimum should be two pieces, a long butt section and a short tippet section. And that way, when you break off, you're not going to lose very much at most. So give that some thought. You can make your own leaders. It's not hard. You really just have to master... Uh, the triple surgeon's knot or the double surgeon's knot, and you can build any leader you like. One last little word of caution, don't go down steeply in 
size of tippet. I don't go from 30 pound to 10 pound, for example, in one go, because the knot won't hold. Step it down. You know, so you go from 30 to 20 to 15 to 10, for example, that'll work. But if you went from 30 to 10, the knot will be weak. That's where these come in. If you have to go from 30 to 10, like in my nymphing leaders, tippet rings. Then you can go from 30 to 10. So make your own. They work fine. They're actually more effective uh, when you need to sink a fly. So making your own leaders is not a challenge. Pretty simple and uh, it doesn't take very long. I build them right in the side of the stream when I'm fishing. So get out there and have some fun. Cheers.